angels and archangels we have gathered there cherubim and seraphim throng the air but his mother Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mother of Sorrows. Today we're celebrating the liturgy for the second Sunday of Advent. Would you please stand as we sing our opening song? Glad to have you in. Okay, now full disclosure here. Who has all their Christmas shopping done already? Oh, did you do any Christmas shopping, Ralph, at all? You did, okay. Just full disclosure here. Who, um, who has all their Christmas cards done already? Oh, there's a couple of them. Get their name and address so we can see those folks. So welcome everybody here. You go. Let's greet each other here and say 19 more days till Christmas. You know, so we can greet each other and say that. <laughs> Good morning. You're welcome. Good morning, everybody. And good morning to all the folks who are watching us uh, on our YouTube channel right now. Our, 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 our liturgy here is live streamed this morning, so God bless all of you with us here today as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with okay, let's get serious here for a moment now. Uh, the beautiful gospel today begins, it begins with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. 
a good news which continues to our day. And here we are today, you know, to celebrate that awesome good news. You and I are called to be prophets of this good news of Jesus Christ. Let's begin and ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come to us this morning in word and in sacrament. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory to bring salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land.
kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from the heaven. Himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending a messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. 
a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a, king, a gospel, a, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him, were being baptized by him in the river Jordan as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair, with a, weather, a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Roberta Caspari's life had just hit rock bottom. Her husband leaves her with her two children, no job and few prospects. But with her gift of music, she begins to rebuild her life once again, and all the while touching hundreds of children in a school in East Harlem, a poor school in East Harlem in New York City. And the story is told in a movie called Music of the Heart. Her, as a gifted violinist, Roberta takes on a job as a substitute teacher in this poor school in East Harlem, and um, barking out orders to her reluctant students, believing in her music, believing in her students. She moves out of her mother's comfortable suburban home and buys a little apartment in East Harlem and begins to go to work. She is very hard on her students, but they know that she loves them and cares for them, and so they respond to her. Their families struggle emotionally and economically and tries to support all them. She even takes on a very cynical school board, which tries to crush her program even to 10 years of remarkable, wonderful results. So this woman, with deep dedication and conviction and with 50 violins, begins to change the lives of her students. She's affirming them over and over and over again, always calling them to more and to more and to more. And with her music, and maybe I should say with their music, they create a world of healing and of beauty, a sense of accomplish where all around them is nothing more than a barren wasteland. And I share the story about Roberta Caspari, if I may, um, as an image an image of a biblical prophet. A biblical prophet is someone who's in a very difficult world, a very barren world, a struggling world, a world like our own that we live in here today, and begins to offer a vision of what we can be and what we should be. A biblical prophet is someone who offers with deep conviction and dedication this vision of what we can be and what we should be. And so whether you and I possess the fire of John the Baptist, the dedication of a Roberta Caspari, given the gifts and talents that you and I have, you and I are called in a similar kind of a way to be prophets in our own world. You know, in the back of the church back there, and those who are watching us, they know in the back of the church there's a sign back there usually, and we don't know where to put it. It's a big sign, and it has the motto that we came up with as a parish six years ago. Who know, remembers the motto back there? Jesus, Jesus ignite me. Is it in the back of the church. Could I say it this way? Jesus ignite me. Jesus ignite all of us to have the courage to transform our barren worlds into worlds of acceptance, of welcoming, compassion, and love, which is so desperately needed in our world today. And for you and I to do such a thing, it seems to me it's going to take a certain amount of grit and courage. In a world we like to sort of like just sort of run away and go hide ourselves someplace from all that's going on around us, you and I are being called 
to be these prophets who trust, risk, and work like crazy. I have shared this with you before, and as a matter of fact, when I did share it, someone told me there was a song about this letter that I am going to share with you right now. As a matter of fact, on Facebook, if we can find the song again, we're going to put it up there so you can uh, hear the song that's about this particular letter. So let me share this with you once again. <clears throat> it, it reads, The following letter was found in a baking powder can wired to a handle of an old pump that offered the only hope, the only hope of drinking water in a seldom used trail in the middle of the desert. It begins, This pump was all right as of June 1932. I put in a new washer and it lasts for five years. But the washer runs dry and the pump has got to be primed. Under the white rock, I buried a bottle of water out of the sun, corked and up. There's enough water in it to prime the pump, but not if you drink some first. Pour about one quarter and let her soak, the wet, soak in to wet the... the, the, the uh, the, the washer, wet the leather, then pour the rest medium fast and pump like crazy. You'll get water. The well never runs dry. Have faith. When you get watered up, fill the bottle, put it back like you found it for the next feller. Signed, Desert Pete. P.S. Don't go drinking the water first. Prime the pump with it and you'll get all you can hold. Remember, I shared that with you once before. And believe it or not, in that letter, there is all the essential ingredients that you and I need to be these prophets that you and I are all called to be. There's three of them, three different ingredients for all of us here. And the first one is trust. You and I need to trust that there is someone greater than ourselves who knows us completely and cares for us and knows what's best for us as well. For the letter there that I just shared with you, that's Desert Pete. For uh, the story I just shared with you, Roberta Caspari. For the gospel today, it's John the Baptist. For all of us, it's Jesus. He's the one we must be trusting like that. Not a sterile idea or a theology or a philosophy, but a person who desperately, desperately cares for each and every one of you, who knows what's best for us, and we need to be able to trust him. The second thing, the second ingredient that is in our little letter there today was you and I need to risk. Oh, how I wish life wasn't about risk. But folks, as you all know, sitting here right now, life is about all kinds of risks. I wish it was that, not that way, but indeed it is. So desert people, by the way, if you and I were in the desert, and we were thirsty, what would be the most important thing we would long to have would be water. So here's Desert Pete. He's asking us to risk the very stuff of life, to risk water. And if we do, we'll get everything that we could hold. Roberta Caspari risked everything for her students. John the Baptist risked everything for his vision and his message. What are you and I willing to risk to really risk? What are we being asked to risk right now as followers of Jesus Christ? Then the third thing here is you and I have to work at all of this. Desert Peace says once you trust, once you risk, you got to pump like crazy. And here you and I are in the midst of this most terrible, difficult time in our world, this, this time of, of, of the virus. And I would say you and I more and more than ever have to be self-starters about our spiritual lives. Every single day, we have to be risking and, and pumping hard so you and I can continue to stay connected to the church, connected to Jesus Christ all the time. So once we trust, once we risk, you and I have to pump like crazy. We have to work like crazy at the spiritual life if we're going to continue in the difficult times we live in here today. Advent is a time for you and I to be recommitted to proclaim Jesus Christ, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Advent's a time for you and I once again to open ourselves to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know, uh, for you who are in small groups, which one of the different uh, choices you made as far as your small groups are concerned, but I've been reading the book by James Harnish called When God Comes Down. 
I find the things he's writing there really, really uh, profound for us to listen to here today. I want to share something that he wrote. It's a little bit long, but so stay with me, because I, but I think it's really important what he's saying to us. He writes, faith does not mean that we should never have any questions or doubts. It doesn't mean that we have, we have claimed a strange, it, what it does mean, excuse me, is we have claimed the strange story of Jesus to be the central story by which we choose to live our lives. We commit ourselves to follow the one who we believe is our God and incomprehensibly made man. Joseph's obedience resulted in a radical reorientation of his life. Matthew tells us Joseph was a righteous man. That means synagogue attending, law abiding. And that's what creates the tension in his story. God's law handed down from Moses said that a woman like Mary's condition should be stoned to death. His love of Mary went against the rules by which he lived his life, causing him to risk God in a way that he never, ever risked God before. For Joseph, God's coming down wasn't a pleasant addition to what he already believed. The birth of Jesus was a radical reorientation of his entire life that resulted in a radical change in his behavior. It was not a new addition to what was, but a new definition of what could be. It was not a reaffirmation of his old assumptions about religion, but a total shift in what he believed. That's what John the Baptist is trying to say to us. A total shift in what we believe, to trust, to risk, to pump like crazy. Maybe I could put it this way. For us to, to let once again Jesus ignite me, Jesus ignite you, Jesus ignite all of us. And if we do, we'll get all that we could hold. Could you please stand and grab your programs once again? As you and I together now with one voice, let's you and I profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This great story began 2,000 years ago and continues with all of us here today. To this God who is present here among us, let's offer these petitions. Our response is God of repentance. Hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all the church leaders, may the Lord continue to bless them with fortitude and growth in holiness. We pray to the Lord. God, God of repentance, repentance, hear our prayer. For the world, may God's infinite power 
bind up the wounds of all people and bring peace, especially in the lands fermented by violence. We pray to the Lord. God of repentance, hear our prayer. For all the world and local leaders, may the Holy Spirit give them the graces necessary for governing with prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. We pray to the Lord. God of repentance, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering from the virus, grave illness, depression, or mental illness, and their caretakers and families, that they may find healing, comfort, and strength through the love of Jesus, our Savior. We pray to the Lord. God of repentance, hear our prayer. For Jeffrey Units and Alexandra Kopko, who were married here this weekend, may God grant them holy and fruitful love, peace, and courage. We pray to the Lord. God of repentance, hear our prayer. For all of us in this faith community, that our personal relationship with Jesus Christ be nourished by the word of God and a life of prayer, we pray to the Lord. God of repentance, hear our prayer. Let us pause now to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. and for the souls of the faithfully departed, especially for Carrie Berich, we pray to the Lord. God of repentance, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give us open hearts that we might repent and that we might experience your forgiveness so that with open hearts we might be light in a world of darkness and grant all these things that we now ask through Christ our Lord, amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And so we, since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for He assumed that His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design You formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, 
We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with all the wholesome powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. We ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins. You brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love each other through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now... Celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took a chalice of blessing in his hands. He confessed your mercy. Then he gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you've gathered us now around the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in the new heaven and the new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Baptized as brothers and sisters of Jesus, 
we now call God our Father. So at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, that you and I now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and offer one another now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you guys. Peace, Joe. Peace, gentlemen. Be with you. born of Mary a long time ago, born of the church here today. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. our Prince of Peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice. Let us pray. <clears throat> Replenish by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of this world and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Could you be seated for just a moment, please? And I get a few announcements. They're kind of important ones, too. Uh, first of all, um, no penance service per se this year for because of the idea of the gathering and everything else. But we're going to have two evenings, the 13th, 14th and 15th. We're going to get a couple priests here 
We're going to spy to the priests around the school and maybe in here. And we're going to be able to have confessions from like 6.30 to about 8 o'clock each of those two nights. You're welcome to come and join us. We're glad to have you. And we have some hospitality folks here. So we'll just direct people where there's a priest available for you to go to confession. And we'll have that set up for you. We'll work out the details. We'll talk more about that next week. But that's next Monday and next Tuesday for all that. Angel Tree, still have a few more things there. Almosttoday.com. Check that out. Facebook Live is tonight at 7 o'clock. We're going to talk a little bit more about prophets, a little bit more about uh, us being those prophets and uh, some other things as well. So join us for Facebook Live tonight at 7 o'clock on our, our, our um, Omos um, channel there, our, our Facebook channel for our mother's sorrows. And Christmas Masses are, um, uh, so we're going to have Mass here. We're going to have Mass over here next door as well. We had that experiment last week where we had a big 10-foot screen over there. And we had other speakers, and everything worked out very, very well. As a matter of fact, the folks said they could hear more clearly over there than they could hear clearly here, believe it or not. For all those who are graduates of our mother's sorrows, you know the acoustics? And the person told us, uh, he said, the acoustics are not your problems. Your speakers are your problems. So the acoustics are fine over there. And so we're going to have mass. Now, mass is filling up for the 4 o'clock here. I think it's pretty much full. The 7 o'clock, from what I gather, is pretty much full. So the overflow is going to go next door, which will live stream the Mass, and we'll be coming over there for communion and everything. So it'll be like we'll be together, but we'll be live streaming. And you'll say, well, I don't want to go to Mass over there. We're going to make it look nice, by the way. But I, I, I'm sure Mary and Joseph didn't exactly think, I don't want to have the baby in a barn. I don't want to have the baby in a cave. I don't want to lay him in a manger, you know. But... You know, so maybe, maybe our Christmas this year will be more like that first one a long time ago uh, uh, than it was ever before for us. So sign up. Keep signing up. We'll have more and more sign-ups for the 7, the, excuse me, 4, 7, 10, and then 10 o'clock in the morning, I think, is the next one. And then uh, St. Um, Michael's, 4 o'clock, uh, and then there's, uh, I forget the exact time of the one, I think it's 945, is the one in the morning for them. So you have to sign up for them, too. They have all their signups too, so that's four, five, six masses we will have uh, here, and I'm hoping we can fit everybody in for all that. We'll tell you more details as things unfold. And, and lastly, uh, um, the th Tuesday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and so mass will be uh, six o'clock Monday evening, eight o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, noon at St. Michael's, and six o'clock in the evening on Wednesday evening as well. And so those masses will be there for everybody to be able to attend all those as well. And we're working out a situation where we live stream as well. At 6 o'clock, okay, Kevin? Okay, we're going to live stream the 6 o'clock for sure on Monday for the Immaculate Conception as well. So we can be able to do that. So I am grateful to all these guys that work in the back for all that stuff. So I'm very grateful with all the stuff we're doing, be able to get things out virtually as well. Could you please stand? <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our prayer for protection. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who roam around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's sing about John the Baptist. One, two, three.